Tatum. Let's do an install today on a Pentium 2 machine. Uh, I believe it's a 400 megahertz processor. Oh, 400 megabytes of RAM and a 32 gigabyte disk drive. Now, I know you're going to ask, why am I doing it? Well, it's because um, a little while ago, a bug was found in glibc that managed to escape two versions. And it caused all um, CPUs of this era to no longer work. So, thanks to Germ who generously donated a Pentium 2 machine. We're going to finally have a way to uh, test packages to make sure things like that never happen again. Let's see if we can get Gen 2 installed on this machine and set it up as a little test bucket just to see so you can catch early issues. So, let's begin. I am going to do something out of the ordinary today. And I'm gonna use ButterFS what did he say? on this system. Just cause I think it'll be a little bit better. The copy on right and snapshots if I need it, just to get myself out of trouble if I test something stupid. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's crazy. I know I'm using it. But I can't get Rust to work, so I can't use BcacheFS. So butter it's gonna be. At least you get to enjoy him watching me trying to use butter again for the first time in decades. Right, let's do a CF disk. Oh, the speeds of this machine, eh? And what we got? I think that's probably pretty good. Is 8 gig too much to swap? No, I think I'll keep that 8 gig. Eight gig to swap. Yeah, 400 megabytes of RAM. I remember Germ saying to me that it, every time it reboots, it comes up with a different figure of RAM. I've never seen a machine do that before, but hey, if there's someone who uh, is the opposite of me, it's Germ. He uh, he's the hardware version of Jank to my software version. That's what makes this the uh, the ultimate crossover. It's when the uh, the most extreme software person meets the most extreme hardware person. Let's try and see if I can do this. So, make file system. Dot. Let's see if we can enable compression. Maybe we need to do that on the. Uh, on the next part, so. Ah, oh, I know why. These are do that inside the char root, and I'm not here. Yeah. Idiot. Alright, so, CD melt gen 2. And then we do. And we're going to use a i68 OpenRC glibc stage first. Right, can we untar that? I wonder how long this would take. Uh, var. Oh, I'm doing var. Kathy's not sunk in just yet. There we go. You can actually read the text. Oh, there we go. Now we're moving. Oh, that took a long time. You don't know how long that took. It almost took as long as this shameless plug to mention uh, how close I am to being able to monetize this channel so I can fund some more of my stupid plans in Gen 2. If you can uh, watch a few more of my videos, I'd really appreciate it. Just get me over that line and earn that sweet $5 a month <laughs> just to put towards making more interesting videos for you all to watch. Cheers, guys. Okay. So, that's done. Let's see if we can get Charu into this. So, multi proc. We're in. Right, let's mount. Right, let's see if we can enable encryption now. Uh, I'm going to need to 
emerge. Well, I'm gonna need to do an emerge sync out first. Come on. Doesn't matter how how good you get with Linux, you still make the same stupid mistakes every time. Let's run an emote sync and then we'll do that. Oh god, that was an experience. I don't know if you've uh, noticed the time on the bottom, but Christ, that took a long time. Whew. All right, let's uh, let's emerge the uh, our program. So that'd be PTRFS progs. Starting to think this uh, this video will be the uh, the linked video every time someone asks how long does it take to install Gen 2 on my relatively fast machine. <sighs> Becoming a meme more and more every day. All right, so why is this not working? Have we found a bug? Oh great! Ah, crap! The SS, uh, the SSC bugs back. Shit. Okay, let me go and uh, look into this. Okay, so I've had a look at the Git logs, and I can see the fixes in the R11 build for this, so the one that we found a while back. Um, ah, uh, crap! So. The way around this is going to be um, report the issue upstream to Gen 2, and we'll use the last version of the pre of glibc. So we use the last version of the stage three with the previous working version of it, um, glibc stage three. That'll get us around the issue. We can then put some measures in place to make sure we don't hit this bug again. Hmm, interesting. So, everything we just done that was basically a waste of time, but we found a bug. So, let's exit the hill. You mount dev sys run proc remove rf. Uh, Okay, so we've fixed all those weird little issues and as you can see now it only installs the working version of glibc when they upgrade. Let's try and do uh, the update. Sorry, let's try and install the butter fs prox package. Someone didn't turn on the microphone. We're just gonna quickly emerge all the needed tools like Grub, um, Crony, System Logs. You know the basic tools. We'll get that done, and um, yeah, hopefully System Boots. Uh, in the meantime, though, let's uh, listen to the owner of the laptop talk about it a little bit. Um, we're gonna be good to learn some more this is my favorite laptop ever this is the IBM 600 I bought this for five dollars on shopgoodwillonline.com it can't address a whole half gigabyte of RAM but you can put half a gigabyte of RAM inside it it's not true 32-bit and if it were you could address 3.2 gigabytes of RAM instead you're left with about 400 megabytes why is this laptop so cool do you like the T420 or the T480, or are you going gray and like the T60 like me? Well, congratulations. This is its grandfather. It's the IBM 600, and the 600 series later became the T series. What's so good about this ThinkPad? Do you want to compile links in upwards of 30 to 40 minutes at a time so that you can procrastinate? 
Do you want to lose your train of thought waiting for your system to boot? Do you like spending too much money on old, old, old things? Then this is the laptop for you. You see what I mean? That guy is the hardware version of me. You can just tell he loves it. Was absolutely perfect. To describe the passion of something. But we're all done our side now. Let's see. Does it boot? Let's give it a go. Right, so we're in. Let's do the moment of truth. One Neo Fetch running on a Pentium 2. Very nice. 34 megabytes of RAM as well. So, let's run that DFH. I'm using 2.8 gigabytes of space. Let's try to turn on compression now that we can. There we go, compression is now on. It's gonna take a moment. So what it does, let's recap a little bit. This install took around two days in real time. Actual the install took me 10 hours. Bearing in mind, I did hit that bug with um, SSE, rendering the first install useless so yeah um if we say six to ten hours to install on a 90s pentium machine uh sorry on a 90s pentium 2 machine yeah generally doesn't take that long really does it i mean if you think how far we've come since the 90s till now yeah you shouldn't be taking that long at all to install gen 2 so i think this one finally um, this proves the theory it takes a long time to install Gen 2. It's more learning the skills to be good at managing Gen 2 and Linux in general that takes the longest time. So, yeah. Yeah, it only took me, what, 20 years to get good? So, yeah. <laughs> what should we say? It takes 20 years to install Gen 2? I think that's what we'll go for then. Let's, uh, let's go back to the, uh, the system though, let's see how we go. Right, compression's done, let's see how much space we saved. 800 meg, nice. Nice. So, we're done. I think it's uh, time to thank Germ again for donating this hardware to Gen 2. We're going to use this to uh, look for bugs and we'll uh, we'll set that up in another video but for now i hope you enjoyed this one um and yeah i'll see you on the next one keep compiling so it's clear i have a gender addiction if you want to help enable me 
and in exchange make interesting videos for you why not consider being like these wonderful people and donating to me um, prices start at one dollar and it helps me to do tasks such as these please consider um, clicking on the patreon link to find out more cheers guys